actually relatively pleased to hear the last um, definition of innovation because it fit pretty close to mine. Um, but I think we actually get invention and innovation frequently confused, particularly in the public dialogue. So this is the, the dictionary definition of invention. It's making something new. Uh, the, the keynote speaker talked about innovation being solving a social need or deploying to be something useful. I actually believe there's a, there's a gap between these two. I actually believe that's what design is about. Design is actually that bridge between invention and innovation. It's the thing that brings the two together. And the processes and methods and approaches we talked about in design are really all geared toward making something useful, practical, and deployed uh, in the real world. So that's my definition of design. Uh, goes far beyond the definition of design that a lot of the popular culture sees as about creating beautiful form. Well, that's a part of it. That's only a small part of it. So that's the perspective that I have on design. And as I mentioned, the public dialogue, uh, I think, often gets invention and innovation confused. Um, I heard uh, recently a guy named Chris Trimble from Dartmouth speak. And he said, you know, the public dialogue is, is we talk about innovation, most of the solutions proposed are really about invention. So the STEM programs about creating more engineering and science majors, math majors, um, focus on patents, those are all about invention. We talk very little, we use the word innovation, we actually don't talk about the solutions for innovation. So Chris uh, was talking about his, his favorite thing to do, like I said, the young son. He said on Saturday mornings, they make waffles together. That's their ritual. And he said, the thing about making waffles is you use eggs, flour, and water. And the national dialogue is all about getting more flour. So let's have more patents, more flour. He said, what the governing factor in the amount of waffles you can make is not any one ingredient. You actually have to have a balanced ingredient. So I think the national dialogue around, the international dialogue around innovation, is actually missing this design piece. We keep talking about one part, but more invention, more new stuff, isn't going to actually make that new stuff be deployed. And the keynote speaker right after lunch was talking about the amount of waste in the system. We invent a lot of stuff, we don't deploy it effectively. Design is what helps you deploy it effectively. So that's what I teach uh, at Berkeley and at Singularity. Um, and this is not mine, it's from uh, a woman named Jean Lidka, who teaches at uh, the Darden School of Business. And she just said, what's the world about? What's the problem? We diverge, then we converge. Then we say, what if? What, what, are, the, what are the possibilities? That's where you do brainstorming, try to create solutions. Then we do what wows, what's going to work? That's testing, and then what works is actually deploying. So that's a simple, there are other models, but they all kind of follow roughly the same, same approach. And she has a bunch of tools. That's the model pretty much that I use and the model I was taught 30 years ago in the architect. Um, so what do we do? We take students uh, and try to have them apply a design process to a project. Um, and they pick their projects, uh, the projects very widely. Um, but the process is one of both theory and doing. Um, I believe the teaching design can only happen if you do things. You actually practice it. It's not a theoretical exercise. While there's use in talking about design, uh, you have to actually get to do it. So that's what we have the students do. I'm fortunate that I'm in a program that has a mix of students from various backgrounds. Uh, we also have a very hands-on experience in some, some special spaces they can use to, uh, to work in teams and work visually. Um, I, too, believe in very diverse teams. Um, the last speaker was talking about letting teams form themselves. That's the, that would be where I diverge from a teaching standpoint. I actually force fit the teams. Maybe that's too violent a term. Um, I do not let the students pick their teams. The first thing they do, and I was actually talking to another one of my Berkeley colleagues in a different school here today, he does something similar. Their first assignment is to tell me about their background. They fill out a card. It says, where did you grow up? Where have you gone to school? What's your work experience? What are your hobbies? And then I sit down at my desk and form the teams. And I look for diversity in as many dimensions as possible. You know, I'll take the MBA student who's really focused on corporate social responsibility, who worked at a, as an intern at a nonprofit, put him with a chemical engineer. Um, because what happens is you actually, through that diversity, there, there are two things that happen. One, you learn to work like you work in the real world, because you do have to work with all kinds of different people. But secondly, they, they end up with a very, a very rich set of skills and resources on the team. So the second thing that happens when we put teams together after they come panicked because they're a bunch of strangers, they have to learn about each other. And we, do, we have some structures and methods for them to, to actually learn about each other and learn what they're about. 
and they inventory their resources. Because one of the things they have to think about if they solve the problem, design problem, what resources do they have? Um, so just a couple of things about design. Um, just a, a quick view of what it's about. Um, you know, here's sort of four, four big principles. You know, one is to start with the user. Maybe. There we go. Start with the user. So think about the user and the customer. Those may be different. Uh, and really find a way to get inside their shoes and inside their head. Um, and there are techniques that we teach to do that. The next, uh, we, we try to move beyond optimization. I guess that would be one difference from the uh, SRI definition. Uh, I was a little disturbed by the continuous improvement because that sounds like optimization as opposed to really you know, blue sky or blue ocean thinking. So we try to get them to think of uh, totally new solutions. Multiple disciplines are very, very important. Again, I'm fortunate to teach in a program that, that helps to do that. Um, the problems that we face today, and Celine will talk about this, can't be solved by an individual discipline. They require a bunch of disciplines coming together in an interdependent kind of way. So that's really important. And the last one is a prototyping approach or prototyping culture, where uh, we make stuff, they build stuff, they test ideas. Not necessarily very high fidelity prototypes, but the idea is to test, test, and test learn by doing. Um, so the last thing I'll leave you with, this comes from Roger Martin, who's uh, the dean of the Rotman School of Toronto. He's talked about, he, he's dean of the business school, and he teaches design in his program as well. And he's talked about the difference between what we teach in business schools and what, what designers are taught. And business schools typically teach what he says, he calls um, reliability. What we're looking for um, in the MBA program is often to come up with the right answer that one right answer, and we're often looking at managing risk. So a lot of our techniques are around mitigating and managing risk and understanding it. Designers are trained to look at the opposite problem, create what he calls validity. You may not agree with that term, but a new solution, a new approach. So business students or business people are taught to drive out variation. They're taught to throw out the outliers. I to think of, of things like six, six, Sigma. What's the outlier? What's causing it? Let's get rid of it. Well, on this side, what these guys are trying to do is find outliers. Because that's where innovation comes from. What, where's the outlier? Why is it there? And what can we learn from that? So we have these two cultures that educationally are quite different. A lot of what we're trying to do is to bring them together.